The book is Never Shut Up. Marcellus Wiley is with me here as we take a look at the, uh, the career and, and a, lot of, a lot of thoughts on the NFL. And I, I want to start here, though, Marcellus. You talk about how you were a nerd growing up, valedictorian of your high school, the best typing person I've, that, that you won contests as a kid. But I, I'm curious, like, you were also this great football player. So were you more... Were you a guy that was the cool football player, or you were the nerd? Like, what was your actual, like, it, coming out of high school, what did people think was going to happen to you? Yeah, great great conversation there. I mean, it went all over the place. Uh, I, I guess it started with my eagerness in the classroom. I was just a young kid, first grade, second grade, third grade. Uh, I was on the academic decathlon team. I was uh, in the spelling bee. Uh, I was just a guy who loved academics, but then... Uh, I made my way to a track, and I made my way to a football field. I was extremely fast for my age, and I got a reputation in the neighborhood of racing everyone before school and racing anyone at home in the streets. And I would beat, I'm eight years young, beating nine-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds. I could just beat people racing. And I had a great youth-level football experience and it's funny there's no video really of it i have some old vhs tapes somewhere in storage but i was so good that i was getting recruited to go to high school from pop warner and finally i, I get to high school and i have oscar slaughters oh. which is uh debilitating knee issues basically telling your body you're going to go through a growth spurt but until you go through it oh my god it saps you of all your athleticism so uh, I'm a guy who's getting undermined in terms of how good I could play on the field. I'm no longer the greatest one on the field. And um, I just kept that balancing act. I had major schools still recruiting me. I went on the college trips. But Columbia became my choice because it was the greatest safety net. I needed that safety net to make sure myself and my family got out of Compton, got out of South Central. So I went Ivy League. So you actually thought at that point, that you weren't even thinking about the NFL. You were like, look, I got I to gotta get as good an education as I can possibly have so I can make a living here, correct? Well, I, I, it's weird. It's nuanced. So I would say if I had to put a percent on it, 10% uh, of me thought I could make it to the NFL. 90% was like, go to Columbia and get your education. Okay. But I had the assurance that if you're a great player, they'll find you anywhere, whether you're a uh, Jerry Rice or Walter Payton or anybody who went to a small school and made it big, I was like, look, I'm going to get the best education, and if I ball out there, this will be an added bonus. I'll make it to the league. But I didn't put all my priorities and eggs in that basket. All right. I mean, that is a very professional young man right now that you're describing. Congratulations on that. Your parents, somebody, somebody deserves a lot of credit. So now you're this guy that's in the NFL, and you're getting beat up, and you're seeing trainers saying, hey, take this, take that, and you'll be okay. What type of drugs did you take to keep yourself on the field? Oh, man, I, I guess my favorite was <laughs> Vioxx, uh, which uh, it, it was, it, for me it was a wonder drug. It was like a strong Advil, a leave. Uh, literally, I could walk into the facilities and, and not feel good, soreness, bones aching. I take a Vioxx, woo, amazing practice. Now, it wasn't the strongest. It wasn't the injections that you get on game day, which I had, but it, it got me through the day-to-day. -day. But then you look up, they ban it from the NFL. Why? It causes heart disease and strokes. So, I mean, good luck with that one. And that happened several times with several different drugs. But the NFL day one wasn't the same NFL that I retired from, which is a good thing. Uh, we, used to, we used to get blank envelopes from the trainers you walk in hey man this hurts and he's like take this walk away you don't know what you're taking you don't know how to pronounce it you don't know you don't have any pamphlets any brochures uh then you get on the team plane and it's time to fly away to a road trip and we're drinking alcohol with those same pain pills there so that's day one nfl 1997 it changed all of a sudden now you are informed you're more enlightened uh they will tell you what you're doing and why do you take this drug and go through the proper process that normal people go through when they go to the doctor's office. So uh, respect to the NFL for trying to change it, but obviously a lot of people got chewed up and spit out in that process. So you don't blame the players. They're like, hey, I, you, know, you could ask questions, but 
you don't blame me because like if you don't take this and you don't get yourself well, well then you're going to be out of the league and it's going to be over. Yeah, I mean, they're using our incentives against us, and we know that the incentives shape behavior. I'm begging to get on the field. Your job is to protect your investment, which is me, and to protect this company, which is this team. So don't put me on the field in a short-lived position. Don't put me out there, and I'm going to return back here worse. So put me out there when it's the proper time. And look, as a player, we're not medical students we don't have master's degrees in medicine so even if you tell me the stuff you tell me the information please just let me know if this is good or bad for me um i I challenge anybody right now that goes to their local doctor and then they say well take this there's so much trust built in that relationship and that's the same as the nfl trainer um i didn't go to school for what you just handed me but you did and I trusted that what you said is going to be something that helps me and never comes back to harm me. That was the conversation that they're having now, but before there wasn't that conversation. So uh, players now are more enlightened, so I think they're more responsible. Why Why'd you write the book, Never Shut Up? What are you trying to get out of it? Uh, inspire everyone, man. Uh, I'm the same kid with my path of growing up in Compton around all the drugs and gangs and the poverty and the low ambition that the world told me I couldn't make it. Uh, The naysayers were loud and plentiful, uh, but I wanted to tell the world who I was and I never shut up. So I didn't let my circumstances tell me who I had to be. I dictated my circumstances. And then at Columbia, no one thought I would make it to the NFL and I didn't listen to them either. I just kept plugging, kept planning and kept plowing at it. And I made it to the league. And it's crazy, even in the league, all my teammates used to laugh when I told them I'm going to do something bigger and better once I leave the game. And my highlights were in front of me in life, not behind me. And they used to laugh too, man. We used to get in so many arguments. Man, you're not going to make money outside of the real world like you do playing football. So never shut up, man. Never stop telling the world what you want and who you are. Little, little belief, little preparation. Before you run, the national anthem... Uh, you don't like the, the way, and nobody really likes the way the NFL has partnered with their players. I, I think you have a pretty good solution of how you would have handled it if, if Marcellus Wiley was actually playing today. Well, it shouldn't have been as noisy as it was. Whether you protest or not, it, it shouldn't have gotten taken out of context, and it was. It shouldn't have been a political discussion. It shouldn't have been a national anthem discussion. It should have just been about the NFL supporting the cause from a player, as all causes are supported by the NFL. Go to any NFL stadium. All you're going to see is causes in the community. You're going to see causes in the medical field or Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Whatever you want to see, uh, just look at the NFL in terms of their wall of support. Um, this one shouldn't have been as noisy, but it was. But at least now they've monetized it. They're giving resources back to the community. Uh, the $100 million given by the owners is a great start, and I'm sure that now – There's more support and more alliances than adversaries in this cause. So uh, disappointing how it all was handled from both sides in some respects, but respect for now we got to a better place and can make it happen. Who's winning the Super Bowl, Marcellus? Ah, Rams right now, but KC in that offense, man. It's a new NFL. Score, score, score. Watch out for KC. New England always. That's kind of like the default (laughs) so i say those three teams the top three teams in the league right now fair enough great to talk to you ourselves appreciate the time all right take care